Forty years ago, on December 7, 1972, I witnessed the launch of Apollo 17, the last mission to land on the moon. Ten, nine, eight, seven, ignition sequence started. All engines are started. We have ignition. Two, one, zero. We have a liftoff. Have I saw it light up the sky like a sunrise at midnight. Space Center as the Saturn V is moving off the pad. It has now cleared the tower. Roger, Gino, looking great. Russ, good on all five engines. Days later, I watched on television as Gene Cernan and Jack Schmidt, the only professional scientists to visit the moon, explored a spectacular valley called Taurus Litro at the edge of the moon's Sea of Serenity. In their battery-powered lunar rover, they drove for miles across an ancient, pristine wilderness. Up the sides of towering mountains, where they picked up rocks almost as old as the moon itself. Okay, I'm going to get the shadowed material. Oh, hey! At another stop on the valley floor, they made the mission's most surprising discovery. There is orange. Oh, man, that's incredible. Tiny beads of orange glass formed in volcanic eruptions from deep within the moon that would let scientists probe the lunar depths as never before. As Apollo's last moonwalkers made their explorations, overhead in the black dome of the lunar sky glowed the blue and white planet that was their home. Notice that our camera's taking a beautiful picture of Mother Earth. Finally, after three days of living and working on another world, Cernan and Schmidt fired their ascent rocket to leave the surface and rejoin their companion, Ron Evans, in lunar orbit. And the last moon landing of the 20th century was over. Good you have good trust. Since then, as the Apollo adventure has receded into history, we've forgotten what an amazing world the moon really is. The moon is actually the solar system's jewel in the crown, a precious gift from the universe. Its ancient crust preserves the earliest history of our solar system more clearly than any other world. Going to the moon is like being let into the rare book room of the Cosmic Library. It may even offer pieces of the early Earth from the time when life arose on our planet. And on a world with as much land area as the entire continent of Africa, the six Apollo landings barely scratch the surface of what the moon has to tell us. And that's not all. The moon is an ideal place for future astronauts to tackle the enormous challenges of living on other worlds, a kind of outward-bound school for learning to live off-planet that's just three days away from home. And thanks to recent robotic missions, we now know that the moon offers a chance for future explorers to live off the land. Permanently shadowed craters at the lunar poles contain vast quantities of frozen water. I don't think we realize how exciting it's going to be when we can see the moon rise knowing that people are living there, working to make humans a multi-planet species. And when they come home, they will share with us one of the moon's most precious gifts, the sight of the Earth breathtakingly beautiful as an oasis of life in the void. That view, unavailable anywhere else in the solar system, is just one more reason the moon still beckons four decades after we left it. Even as I look back at those incredible events of 40 years ago, I feel more sure than ever that we have a future waiting for us on the moon.